We're here for a compliance hearing today, and we are conducting this through Zoom. Uh, I'm recording to the Zoom cloud. I don't have a court order at this time. And uh, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Todd Alvey, on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, I'm present ready to proceed. Our FBS worker in charge of this case is Ms. Rachel Baca. On behalf of the mother, Sarah Burrell, I'm present, Your Honor. I did give her notification of this hearing, so I assume she was going to be present, but she's not currently present. Jay Michelson, on behalf of the father, um, he's also not present. I have not had contact with him this month. Stacey Zavala, on behalf of the child. All right, thank you. Okay, well... I reviewed the report and it looks like there was some positive feedback uh, regarding parents' progress. So we'll go ahead and get an update from Ms. Baca. Yes, Your Honor, the family's doing really well. Um, they've made really good progress since the beginning of the case. They've been cooperative the whole time. The only um, thing that we have some concern about is uh, Mr. Biglin's mental health. He's still has not um, gotten treated through Texas Panhandle Centers. He continues to miss his appointments. However, he seems to be doing well managing his symptoms um, without medication. He does still plan to um, go to TPC though and um, get an assessment done or treatment. He has gone through to TPC. He has made that appointment. I had just found out um, last Friday when I had, or I'm sorry, Saturday when I had gone in there. Okay, I wasn't aware. So that's good. Um, Holden, he's doing well. Um, he got his immunizations updated. He's doing ECI now, um, speech therapy, and he's doing that twice a month. Um, and the family's doing really well. The last drug test they took was on January 16th. Miss um, Burrell was negative for all substances. Mr. Biglin was positive for marijuana. Um, his level did go up significantly. He, however, he did admit to um, continued use of Delta 9. All right. <clears throat> um, so we just want to continue to work with him for a little while? Yes, ma'am. We are going to um, continue with uh, St. Francis and um, continue with the program uh, prior to dismissal. Okay. All right, then, uh, Ms. Ronho. And Ms. Baca, when exactly is that dismissal in February? Oh, I am not 13th. certain of the exact date. February 13th. That's all I had, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Mr. Matheson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, Mr. Biglin um, had his appointment on um, January 12th at TPC. Um, do you know when his next scheduled appointment is uh, at TPC? I was told that he missed his appointment on January 12th. Um, with his case manager at TPC. And then he was scheduled to see the psychiatrist on the 15th, but he also missed that appointment. So I'm not aware of when he he did go as Ms. Wells. Do you know the reasons why he missed those appointments? He said one of them was because of the weather and another one was because of his work schedule. Okay. The weather when, was... Uh, when I had gone in, um, they I was told that on the 15th... He felt or, or he had written that down wrong. Um, he had gone into, I believe, the the Wyatt Clinic um, to uh, make an appointment to get, to get medication there. And they had sent him down to TPC. TPC had informed him he didn't miss his appointment and he was able to um, go to his appointment. So he actually made his appointment. He had just written it down incorrectly. So it. Um, I was informed that he did get his prescription for his meds. He just needs to fill them. But I wasn't informed his next appointment, the day of his next appointment. Okay, that answers my question. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Okay, and Ms. Zavala? 
I have no questions. I did go visit Holden um, and parents in the home, um, and he appeared to be doing very well. Okay. All right, then we'll just continue everything and see where we're at when we get up to our dismissal day. And uh, hopefully everybody will continue to head in the right direction. So I'll find parents are in compliance and we'll just continue everything. And uh, we're going to schedule, we've got a comp another compliance hearing scheduled just in case the case extended for April 16th on a nine o'clock docket. So y'all can put it on your calendars. If the case gets dismissed before then, obviously we won't need it. Thank you, Judge. Okay. All right. Judge, Thank that, you. Was, that was the only hearing I had with you this morning, so may I be excused? Um, sure. Have a Thank good you. day. Is Thank there you. a plea of some kind? So. Daniel, who are you looking for? Sorry, Judge. Uh, Miss Corbett. Okay. Sorry, Judge. I let him know I had that hearing coming up, but they started anyway <laughs> and it's no problem jerry we're running behind and um so mr trout and mr hill are in a breakout room so okay you're good sorry right. we're running behind oh no worries all right are y'all ready yes ma'am okay i didn't know are you looking for anybody else i've got no, ma'am, I just need this. Okay. Uh, we're here today on a review hearing. We're conducting this through Zoom. We are live streaming, and uh, Ms. Goodman is making our record today. Okay, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trow for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Stephanie Corbett is my privacy specialist. We're present ready on. Jeff Hill, on behalf of uh, Ms. Knight, Judge, I'm here. I was unable to get in touch with her yesterday. Um, so I, I don't know that she's going to be here or not. Okay, I don't have her log in. Jerry Morales for Respondent Father Ernest Hammond, Your Honor. I spoke with him yesterday. I'm ready. Stacey Zabella, on behalf of Ryder. All right, so Ms. Corbett, what do we have new other than what I read in the report? And Judge, before Ms. Corbett starts, I've got a quick question for her on some of Mr. Hill and I just spoke on. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gordon, you'd email me. Um, with your interactions with mom, are you under the impression that maybe she needs a um, guardian ad litem also in this case? Yes. And what what does that do to just... Uh, um, she says she's low functioning and I, I can tell. Um, I don't know how extreme, but um, she is a bit low functioning. When you do have <clears throat> conversations with her and interact with her, is it does she seem to be understanding what's what's kind of going on and what you're talking about? Or is it something she doesn't understand and you have to repeat? What are we looking at? Um, yeah, sometimes I have to repeat it or she doesn't understand. Okay. Does, does she seem to understand exactly how the case is progressing and what she needs to do? Or is she, is that not? Um, um <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> uh, I did go over her plan with her um, when I seen her about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and um, she understood. She said she understood, um, All right. but there, she's just lacking a lot. She says she's low functioning. Um, she still needs a psychological so I can get her IQ level to see like how low functioning she is. Um, but just from your interaction, you, um... I don't think she's real low i think she understands for the most part <clears throat> um but you do think that just from your interactions that maybe she needs a guardian ad litem also yes and judge we would ask for that today if if um the court thinks it's appropriate for her to have a guardian ad litem also and that's that's mr hill and i would just speak about well judge i would actually probably mirror uh what miss corbett said she is low functioning how low functioning i don't know uh, I, I think she's always understood everything I've talked to her about because she's responded appropriately. Um, she makes appropriate comments and stuff, but but she is low functioning and it, it really, you know, it, it, it might be enough to help her. I, I would hate to say, listen, she really doesn't need it. And maybe she misses out on something that could have helped her. So I, I'd rather err on the side of let's do it. Let me. 
women ask, I mean, you know, I, I guess it, maybe it's a retention issue, maybe. Um, Ms. Corbett, do we still have any kind of parent support worker actively working with her? Um, the only one we have is one who watches our visits, and that's all we have. We don't have any more support than that. Do we have a parent support worker that we could assign to her? I mean, I'm just, I'm wondering. We if have, like, St. Francis let most of their parent support workers go. So we only have one for, like, all of St. Francis now. Okay. That's we, we, we have more than one parent support worker, and we can definitely get one assigned, Your Honor. Well, the, the reason I'm asking, and, and maybe we can do both, but my 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 question is, is it more of she just needs that extra help in setting things up, the doing the day-to-day -day stuff versus truly a guardian ad litem. I don't, I'm, I'm not opposed to appointing, you know, guardian ad litem ever, but I, I mean, almost what I'm hearing is she just needs assistance with navigating services. For the main part, um, yes. I, when I try to schedule, like I could literally schedule a visit with her at 10 in the morning um, for like 12 and I'll go over there and she won't be there. And it's, she says she forgot. Um, it, it was like that for the last two months. So I don't know how much she really forgets or, but I think she needs something. She needs that extra boost, that extra help to get her services. Judge, I think now that you bring up the parent support worker, I hadn't thought about that. I think that would probably be the better option. Well, I mean, I, you know, I mean, a guardian's fine and that's all great. But, you know, we usually reserve that for when we really think we've got a parent who really is not capable of of understanding. And it sounds to me like she does at least sort of understand, but she just may need that extra help in getting it done. Um, I'd like to try that. So, Ms. Brown, if, if we've got somebody we can assign to kind of help her and help jumpstart things, because, you know, the truth is she's running out of time. Um, do visits go well, Ms. Corbett? Yes. Um, I watched one in person, and her and Ryder, they really bond. Um, he laughs and giggles, and she she does really well. Um, only thing I, I do somewhat worry about is... Um, like she kisses him on the mouth and stuff. And sometimes, you know, he comes back and he's not feeling so well. Um, so I need to go over some of that with her. Okay. Okay. Mr. Hill. <laughs> I. I'm sorry, what, what? I just was calling on you if there was anything else you had today. No, I'm sorry, Judge. I haven't had any meaningful contact with her for quite a while now. I, like I said, I tried to reach out to her yesterday to discuss the hearing today and was, was unable to get her. So I, I don't have anything since really the last time. Uh -huh. I spoke to her on Wednesday, but um, she said she wasn't feeling well. And I asked her to drug screen. And then I tried again on Friday and yesterday, and I didn't get a response out of her either. Mm -hmm. Ms. Corbett, does does her phone um do you have a new number for her or does I know Mr. Hill told me that it um wasn't sure if her phone was cut off or if it had she hadn't paid a um, she does she have a different mean, number than her normal number? I'm I'm gonna send you a chat uh of the phone number I have and you just let me know if that's still the good number. Okay. Um I believe she has a new one here I'll ah, okay. in the chat. Okay. All right, then, uh, Mr. Morales, and I muted you because there was some background noise. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Judge, um, I spoke with Mr. Hammond yesterday, and he he's still at the Potter County Jail. Um, he stated some of the same things about Alex, about um, her needing help, but he, he says, you know, she's intelligent in her own way, but that he was out there helping. So he, he is pretty laden with guilt because he feels like, you know, he was out there helping. I did tell him, you know, there's some issues – with him just being around her and with her because you know the domestic violence history and stuff like that and i told him that he needs to really we're coming up on the deadline and that he needs to really address the services as quickly as possible obviously he can't do that while he's incarcerated um he's hoping to get in contact and i did contact his criminal attorney to see what uh what could be done 
Um, TD, I think, was just appointed a couple of days ago, and I just happened to see him in court today. And so I told him today, hopefully he can gain some traction on that. He is in there for a probation violation and not a new charge. He, I don't know what his violations are. I haven't had a chance to see that, but he did say that, you know, he he's, I think he was a little overwhelmed. He didn't have a, v, a working vehicle for a while. He was working, he was on probation and trying to work services. And he said that he just got to the point where with helping her, with with showing up to work and him not giving, having many uh, excused days because, you know, he was new to this job that he just, he had missed a bunch and ended up costing him on his uh, probation. And so, I mean, he seems to be pretty stressed about the situation now. And I told him, look, you got to put a priority on number one, your probation, because you're in jail. Obviously you can't work services. And then two, you're gonna have to balance your services and your work. Cause that's part of your services is make, making sure that you, you know, have some stability. And so he said, he's trying, but um, hopefully we get some ground on that. I mean, he, he does seem very concerned, but you know, obviously with him in jail, there's not a lot he can do right now, but th that's about the only update I have from him. Okay. Okay, Ms. Vala. Your Honor, Ryder's doing really well in placement. He was behind physically when he was placed there and has just done great, has caught up and, and is moving all over the place and uh, very active. Um, I did want to get a clarification. I had a note here, and I'm not exactly sure where it came from, that visits with mom had been sporadic. That doesn't sound like what the report says, so I just wanted to confirm um, for myself kind of what the status of visits and her attendance at visits have been. Ms. Corbett. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last. I, I was just saying that I have a note that visits with mom had been sporadic, but it sounds like that's not what's being reported in the in the report. So I just wanted to get clarification, make sure I've got the correct notes on that. Um, when I went, went, when I went, mm, I'm sorry. When I went to, uh, when I called her Monday to let her know she she needed a drug screen, she told me she wasn't feeling good and she canceled that visit. Um, and then I know she didn't have one a week before that week um, because she, uh, the worker was out. But other than that, I mean, I've heard they've been going good and she, she was doing them. But I've got no concerns about placement and I do recommend that that continue. Okay. So Ms. Corbett, just kind of clarifying, I know we, we kind of went around a couple of things. How is mom doing on her services right now? She's completed some, but still has a few left to do. Is that correct? Yeah, she has a few services she needs to do. Gotcha. Um, she needs a psychological. She did do some parenting. Um, Brandon had sent her for some, but she has to pay to get that certificate. So I was going to try to get her some online ones that she doesn't have to pay for <clears throat> that she could do. So is when you say pay for on the certificate, so she did so she did it through right? um the family. Uh, uh, Ms. Corbett, let me let me finish talking before you start. Okay. Um so she completed parenting, but just hasn't got her certificate because she can't pay for it. Does St. Francis yes, not cup they don't get the certificate? Yes. yes. Um who she went through and it says it on her plan that she's responsible for payment. And I believe she said it was a hundred bucks. So they won't give her certificate without it. Um, so I was going to find her one that she could do for free. Okay. But we do know, besides getting their certificate, have we verified that she did complete it, though, through the... No, I haven't verified it. No verification. Um, is there any way for you to verify that without getting your certificate? Because I, I hate to put her back through a parenting class if she actually has completed one, just because she can't pay for the certificate. Um, I, I will check on that. Okay. Um. And what else does she need to do? Um, can I pull up? Can you give me just a moment so I can pull up her? I'm sorry. So it, it looks like she needs to do a domestic violence support group. She has not yes. started. Yes, uh, that, and she needs some income. Um, she said she can't work due to her low functioning. Um, she said she did apply for some uh, disability, but she was denied. I advised that maybe she tried to apply again. Um, okay. Um, looks like she completed her OSAR, went to Serenity for a little bit, but didn't complete. So she needs to complete that. 
Yes, and she is doing some outpatient classes, but she hasn't finished those either. Okay. Uh, and you said she still hasn't completed her psychological. Yes. Um, so. Okay. And then as far as, does she have a place to live, stable housing, all of that? She lives in some HUD apartments. Um, I went and seen it. She's got two pit bulls, which the dogs weren't concerning. Um, it's just they're using the bathroom in the apartment. So that so was a big concern. So we got some cleanliness that we need to yes. take care of and get figured out. Um, okay. As far as dad, I know he's incarcerated, but had he begun any services or has he not started anything at this point? He hasn't started anything to my knowledge. Okay. All right. Um Judge, I would I'd ask, I know standing order, I'd ask that we go ahead and get an order for mediation set on this. Um for you know, I think our final set for the April the fourth. So by sometime middle of March, if we could get this mediated. We'll see where we're going with it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. And I'm I'm good with whatever type of mediator everybody wants. I don't know if Mr. Hill or Mr. Morales would prefer a attorney mediator or or the DRC or in Miss Savannah. Do y'all have any preference on it? I don't yeah, have preference. preference. No preference. Okay. okay. I'll look into it and let the court know if we need an appointment, John. All right, then I'm going to make a finding today that there would be a continuing danger to Ryder to return him home today. The department's using reasonable efforts to reunify the family. I'm going to have St. Francis assign a parent support worker to mom try to assist her navigating services. I'll order the parties to mediation by March 15th. I'll continue the department as temporary managing conservator and I'll continue the child's current placement. And I'll see everybody back. Our final is scheduled for April 4th of 2024 on a nine o'clock docket. Thank you. All right, appreciate y'all. Thank you. We're Thank you. We're Thank connecting you, this through Zoom. We're live streaming, and um, Ms. Goodman's making our record this morning. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trial for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Yolanda Novak is my apprentice specialist. We are present, ready on. Natalie Archer for the mother of Vanessa Williams. Stacy Grant on behalf of alleged father Landon Turner. Savannah Kincaid on behalf of alleged father Miles Watkins. Jeff Hill, on behalf of alleged father Nick Langham, uh, he is not present. Judge uh, Lam. Jerry Morales, on behalf of alleged father Bryce Ains, I have not had any contact with the matter. Bailey Sapien, on behalf of alleged father Justin Edwards, I have not had any contact with my client either. And Lorraine Lucero, on behalf of the unknown father, Your Honor, I'm ready. Stacey Zavala, on behalf of Willow. All right, thank y'all. Okay. Well, I may have just heard about all there is to hear. Uh, all right, my understanding, mom has executed a relinquishment. Is that correct? That's correct. Great job. Yeah. All right. The only father we've had any contact with was Mr. Langham but he didn't live where he gave us address and he's changed phone numbers and we've got no contact with him since. Your Honor, we yeah. also have contact with the father, Landon Turner. I located him after our last hearing and um, we, we have a phone number. I have also requested that he provide an email address to the department so the testing can be completed. Okay. He is not in Texas at this time. Is he is he is he communicating and responding to you? And I mean, do we think we've got any hopes of getting genetic testing done on him? He has indicated he has answered all of my calls and indicated that he's willing to complete the test. He does not believe he will he will come back as the father, Your Honor. All right. The biggest problem we've got is that's we're set for final on March twenty sixth. So, you know, whether or not we could get that done in time is anybody's guess. 
I emailed Miss uh, Brown and Miss Novak the number that I've been able to reach him on. I don't know if they've been successful on the same phone number or if they've had or if they've tried it yet. I emailed it again before this hearing to make sure they had it. Well, I don't know. I'll just toss a crazy idea up there. Would he sign a waiver of interest? I'm, uh, I believe he probably would, Judge. Might shortcut things just a bit. He indicated that he would not have time or ability to complete services if he were her father judge. And so I think a waiver of service or should we get the testing done in time? Um, should that become necessary? I, I believe a relinquishment would be a possibility as well, just based on what I know. Well, I mean, and he, I mean, he could just do I'll, a waiver of interest. Even. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I can uh, say I don't know whether I am or I'm not, but I'm giving up whatever I've got, whatever that may be. Right. I haven't approached him about that, Your Honor, but I I, ha I can complete a waiver of interest and approach him with that and see, see what his thoughts are. I believe that would that would be possible. I, do I don't foresee that being an issue. I'm looking to see if I signed an order for testing yet even on him. Order for paternity testing. Let's see who that's on. Assume him. Yes. I signed that back in November. Yes. Okay. Let me let's ask the department then. Do we know? Do we have anything scheduled for him? Ms. Noah. Have we got the paternity testing scheduled for him? <clears throat> No, we haven't. I have not. Uh, I know uh, Ms. Grant said she sent me his number this morning. I have not had his number. I did an active search on the dads, and I recently did one on him since she sent the name. I had spelled his name incorrectly, so I sent it with the correct spelling. I, it came back with no address or phone number for him, so I appreciate the phone number this morning, but I have not made con any contact with him to get him registered for it. Thank you. Well, we can try to set it up. I don't know that we'll have time to get it done. So I guess let's go ahead and try to get it scheduled. Yeah. I just reached out to him through Facebook and got him very quickly. Um, I don't know that it's his phone number that I used to contact him with. I believe it may be his mother's because it's always a female that answers and she has to get him for me. But that that's the number that I've been able to communicate with him through. And I, I thought I uh, sent it previously when Ms. Novak had sent an email requesting it. And so I sent it again today. So I don't know if, the, if we didn't connect in the November email, but we did try. Well, let's just, I mean, it's all we do is try to get it set up. Yeah. If we want a definitive answer, if not, the other is always a possibility. I think I mean, the other is doable. If he's indicating that he's not going to have time and he can't work services, you know, yeah, I think the waiver is 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 a is a good option, Judge. Okay, Ms. Archer, anything really to report? No, my client hasn't really gotten back to me since she signed the uh, relinquishment. Right after she signed it, she was inquiring about the last visit, and I I don't know whatever became of that. Hey, Ms. Novak, did she have a goodbye visit? She did. She reached out to us and said that she was moving to New Mexico, and we got it scheduled right before she moved. Um, it was on a Friday. I don't remember the day without looking it up, ma'am, but she did have a goodbye visit, and she's reached out since then just for updates and pictures, um, but I, she hasn't given me a forwarding address or anything. I can try to get that for you. All right, and Mr. Morales? I have nothing to add, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Kincaid? Nothing to add, Your Honor. I've had no contact with my client. All right, Mr. Hill? Judge, I have had no contact with Mr. Langham, so nothing to add. All right, and Ms. Sapien? I have nothing to add, Judge. Ms. Lucero? I have nothing to add, Your Honor. 
All right. Um, and your honor, just so the court knows, on is to the um, you know back before the prior last hearing, final hearing we originally set, Ms. Williams mentioned something about um, possible Indian tribe Blackfeet. We sent off a letter back whenever that was September or so. Um, we have still not got any response from them, um, but all of that has been that has been sent and taken care of. We just never have received anything back. Okay. Sure. I think we received the green card showing they were delivered, but no response has come back. <clears throat> so I just wanted to let the court know on that. All right. And uh, Ms. Zavala? Your Honor, Willow is an, an amazing home. She is doing incredibly well. Um, I highly recommend that that placement continue. Is this a legal risk placement? It is, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, anybody have anything else they want to toss out? Okay. All right, then. I will find that there would be a continuing, continuing danger to return the child home to any of the parents at this point in time, and that the department's using reasonable efforts to reunify the family, um, that we're just having no contact with or not much contact with any of the parents. Uh, obviously, mom's already executed a relinquishment. Um, I'll continue the child's current placement and uh, continue the department as temporary managing conservator. We are scheduled for our trial on March 26th of 2024. Um, this is one of those cases I'm not going to make you go to mediation. Nothing to mediate doesn't seem to me. So um, we'll just call it for trial on, on March 26th and see where everybody's at. Yes, ma'am. Probably more a question of where we are with the ICWA stuff, but I hope that's not going to hold us up. Okay. Thank you all very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're scheduled you, to be here on a final today. Thank you. Um, but it was brought to my attention that Ms. Barr, after 12 months, finally decided to fill out her paperwork and request a court appointed attorney. Is that correct, Ms. Barr? Okay, you're muted. You're going to need to unmute. Yes, ma'am. Why didn't you do that about 11 and a half months ago? Um, I'm not for sure. I mean, I filled it out one time before and took it to an office and it never got filed. So, I mean, that's not an excuse. However, I mean, I guess I was just procrastinating and everything on it. Well, you've known this case has been going on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I think you've shown up at one prior hearing, um, at which time I feel pretty confident that at that stage of the game, I admonished you again about getting that filled out and turned in. Yes, ma'am. You understand we have really strict deadlines in these cases that the legislature has said we have to open and close cases within a certain statutory amount of time. Yes, ma'am. And do you know why that is? No, ma'am. It's so we don't leave children in limbo forever. Right. Like you've just done. Okay. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm happy about what you've done because I'm not. Because this makes kind of a train wreck of a lot of things, mostly for your child. Yes, ma'am. So that's on you. So... I'm, I'm going to find there's good cause to extend the case today because Ms. Barr has decided to come to the party and uh, I will give her a reasonable amount of time to meet with her attorney and prepare for trial. Uh, this is not going to be a full six month extension. Uh, I mean, we'll set we'll set a new dis dismissal date for six months from now, but we're also going to set a final in this case. For March 21st of 2024. So you got about 60 days to get with your lawyer. You got about 60 days to get your services worked. Uh, you, you've got a real busy 60 days ahead of you. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are you sure you really understand? Yes, ma'am. Definitely do. All right. Okay, then. Um, I'd like to have an update from the department. We're going to go ahead and hold a review hearing today and um, 
see where we stand. Do you need Ms. Watson in this? She's just logged in. Is she here for something else? She's probably on the next hearing, would be my guess. Okay. Yes, I think she's supervisor on the next. <clears throat> okay. All right, then. Let's get an update from St. Francis. Um, okay, so I met with Cassius not too long ago. He's doing very well. He's happy in his placement. He's on target and school, doing very well. Attending visits um, weekly with mom, once a month with grandma. I met with mom on last Friday. Um, she recently started a new job at Buffalo Wild Wings. It was actually on January 4th she started that job. Um, she has her own house. She has a new vehicle. That's about all I have to update. Oh, she did. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I'll take that back. Um, she went to an intake and orientation for WAVE on 117 or 118. Okay, has she completed any services at this time? No, ma'am. What about counseling? Have we started any counseling? No, ma'am. Um, she had an OSAR scheduled um, and no showed for that. Um, she has not done anything else. Has she drug screened for us recently? She drug screened. She had a negative UA on January 5th. When was the last hair test we had? The hair follicle was... I believe it was first part of December. It was, yes. Uh, December 4th, there was a positive hair follicle. Positive for what? Cocaine. Okay, and so to date, she's done no inpatient or outpatient drug treatment? No, ma'am. All right, Any uh, anything new on uh, the father? Uh, father is still incarcerated. I spoke with him, and um, he has put in requests for counseling and a request for parenting classes um, through the Middleton unit, um, but he said he has not heard anything back on those yet. Do we have his uh, anticipated release date? He has a parole hearing next month. Um, projected dismissal or uh, projected release date is in 2025. I believe October, I'm sorry. And what is he serving time for? Um, Injury to a child, wasn't it? He's got, there's three assault, family violence, and an unlawful restraint of somebody under 17. Yes. Are the three, are the four charges he's in on? Okay, anything else from St. Francis? No, ma'am. Okay, then. Ms. Kincaid? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I am late to this. Um, I was appointed yesterday, and um, I did s briefly speak with my client yesterday evening, but it wasn't enough to have, like, a substantive conversation. So um, I will get in touch with her again, though, and, and we can have uh, get ready for upcoming final. All right, I appreciate it, Ms. Kincaid, and I'm sorry that you've got a limited amount of time. Again, um, that's, that falls back to Ms. Barr, but I appreciate you stepping up. Thank uh, you, Your Honor. Mr. Taylor? The day I was appointed, November 14, 2023, was the day that I entered the hospital through the emergency room and was on extended medical leave until... Uh, two weeks ago and uh, returned to work on a part-time basis uh, trying to get caught up. I have an appointment for a telephone conference with Mr. Thomas 
uh, tomorrow afternoon, and uh, we'll, as Ms. Kincaid just reported, I will do my best to gear up and be ready uh, as best I can. Okay, I appreciate it, Mr. Taylor. All right, Ms. Zavala. Your Honor, uh, Cassius is doing great at his placement, uh, thriving. I've got no concerns about that placement, and I do recommend that that continue. Is it a legal risk placement? It is, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Ms. Zavala. Okay, as I stated earlier, then I'll find there's extraordinary. I guess finding of extraordinary circumstances that uh, sort of mandate the grant of the extension. Um, we're not going to force mom to go to trial without an attorney. So, uh, the, the, I, I'm going to just qualify those circumstances aren't extraordinary based on her efforts, but that there is no point in proceeding to trial on this until she's adequate with her attorney. Uh, so I'll grant the extension in the case. Uh, Mr. Trader, we set a new dismissal date. But let me, let me make sure what date this falls on, Your Honor. Sorry. Um, July 26th of 2024 will be the date. All right, then I also will make a finding that it would be a continuing danger to the child to return the child home at this point in time, that the department has used reasonable efforts to reunify the family. And I will continue the department as temporary management conservator and uh, continue the child's current placement. And I'll see everybody back for the final on March 21st, 2024, and that'll be on a nine o'clock docket. Your Honor, can we have mom drug screen today? Sure, what do you want? What do we want, Miss Ashley? Judge, I'd probably say a UA since she just did a hair fog on December, uh, first part of December, so it's been about a month since she did that. Okay. All right, Ms. Barr, you need to go do a UA for us today before 4 p.m. Remember, failure to show is deemed a positive result. Good luck to you in the next 60 days. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. And Judge, if I may, while the other attorneys are here, I will, um, Ms. Kincaid, Ms. Zavala, and Mr. Taylor, we'll just try to stay in touch if we need to get together for settlement conference or try to mediate before. Um, I'll be in touch and we'll try to get something set up if we all need to get together and meet. I know it's a, it's a short deadline to do it, so hopefully within the next three or four weeks, we'll get something set up. Yeah. Like I said, I'll be meeting with him tomorrow afternoon and then I'll give you an updated report. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. We are here today set Thank for you, everybody. Final in this matter. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. We are live streaming and Ms. Goodman is graciously making our record today. Okay, we'll take announcements. Daniel, excuse me, Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're present ready, guys. Brooks Barfield, attorney at Lightham for mom, Janet. Um, I'm, uh, at, of course, obviously based on the reports, she is not present. I have no contact information for her. I am ready to proceed as I don't see any, any likelihood that we're going to find her anytime soon. Jay Michelson on behalf of Mr. Nyawenda. Um, he is not present. Um, I've had no contact with him and um, I am proceed. Stacey Zabala on behalf of Raphael. Okay, Mr. Trout, who's your first witness today? Uh, Sasha Watson will be my first witness, Your Honor. And may I ask Ms. Watson real quick? Ms. Watson, did you get the list of exhibits I sent out? I can't remember if I put you on them or... Um, I do believe I got them. Okay. And uh, Tippy Watson, did you get them? I'm sorry, I forgot I had two Watsons. <laughs> yes, sir, I did. 
Okay. All right. I just want to make sure everybody got it. Thank you. All right. And okay. your, I, I would make a motion. There may be some just in the testimony, just on how the case went, some sense of information as far as the child. Um, I would ask if we go off YouTube. No objection. I've got no objection to that. No okay. objection. Let me ask this. Can we, um, are we going to get into that from the get-go or is that going to be at some point in time? Um, it, it probably will come out during part of the removal as it was some of the birth record. Okay. All right, then um, that motion has been made and is unopposed. So at this time, uh, to protect the privacy and confidentiality of the child's, uh, sounds like medical uh, history, then uh, we will close the courtroom. Um, I will stop the live stream and I will resume that at the conclusion of this case or, or at the conclusion of any testimony that uh, would breach that.